Okay, class, so we have covered how the electronic domain geometry, that is the arrangement of electron domains around a central atom, depends on how many electron domains there are. And so far we were talking about uh, central atoms that have between two and six uh, electron domains. And therefore we have gone through all of the electronic geometries that are associated with those possible electronic arrangements. The next step is to go on to talk about molecular geometry or the molecule's shape. And it's very similar in concept, but it is still different from the electronic geometry because the molecular geometry only deals with the arrangement of the bonded atoms around the central atom. Therefore, the three steps to determining a molecule's shape, which is what we call the molecular geometry, first we have to determine the Lewis structure. And once we've determined the Lewis structure, then we can determine the electronic geometry. based on the number of electron domains and only after that then we can determine the molecular geometry. Or the shape of the molecule. And just to recall, a Lewis structure is not interested in three-dimensionality. It's absolutely fine if a Lewis structure is drawn in two dimensions. But once we get to electronic geometry and molecular geometry, we're going to have to show the three-dimensionality using wedges and dashes if there are electron domains or bonded atoms that come out of the plane of the paper or the board. So if a molecule is arranged in three-dimensional space, we show it by using wedges and dashes to represent bonds that are not in the plane of the paper or the whiteboard. This is exactly the same as we do it for electronic geometry. Now on these next two pages, page 68 and 69, I have a table here and we're going to fill in this table as we go. And you'll see that in the first column of this table I have the number of electron domains. And for two electron domains we're going to name the electronic geometry, which we already know, we've already done that. Then we're going to assume that we have this number of bonded atoms that are bonded to the central atom. Another way of saying this is that we have two terminal atoms right here. We're then going to three-dimensionally sketch the molecule and name the molecule's geometry. So the first thing that I can do is I can go through my first column, or my first blank column here, the name of the electronic geometry, and I can go ahead and fill in those names because we already have them. So I would like for you to pause the video for now, fill in this blank column right here for these next two pages. When you're done, come back to the video and we'll move on. So go ahead and pause now. All right, so now that we're coming back to the video, you should have the names in there for the electronic geometries that we've already discussed. So if there are two electronic domains, it is a linear electronic geometry, three trigonal planar, and so forth. You notice that there are multiples of some of these electronic geometries because we can have different numbers of bonded atoms. And so we'll go through that as, uh, as we discuss these. All right, what I'd like for us to do now is we're going to three-dimensionally sketch the molecule for each of these 
electron domains given the number of atoms that are bonded to the central atom. To do this, we are going to first draw the electronic domain geometry without any bonded atoms on it. And to do that, we're just going to use the convention that we learned. I'm going to let a capital A represent the central atom, and I'm going to let a straight line represent any kind of electronic domain. And remember, just because I'm drawing them as straight lines here, that doesn't mean that they're single bonds necessarily. It could be a double bond, a triple bond, or even a lone pair as an electronic geometry. But for now, I'm just trying to draw the, the three-dimensionality of where those electronic domains are. So I'm not going to put the bonded atoms on them yet. So here we go. This is two electron domain geometry. It's linear. So I have a central atom and I have two electron domains on opposite sides. We recall that that's a 180 degree angle. The electron domain geometry is linear. When I go to trigonal planar, same way. Right now, all I'm doing, I'm not, I'm not completing the sketch of the molecule. All I'm doing is drawing the electronic geometry because I'm going to use that as the scaffold upon which I'm going to build the molecule. So trigonal planar, trigonal planar, and try to give yourself some space because some of these electron domains are going to have bonded atoms on them. So go ahead and finish that for this column all the way through this page and the next page. Remember, we are not drawing the bonded atoms yet. We're just drawing the electron domains. Go ahead and pause the video now and finish that up. Okay, coming back, we now have our three-dimensional sketches drawn. So we have our linear, trigonal planars, tetrahedral. Now to complete the sketch of the molecule, we are going to start to put this number of bonded atoms on these electron domains. Now again, just because I've drawn them as a straight line here doesn't mean that these are necessarily single bonds. This could be a double bond or a triple bond or even a lone pair. So I'm going to start putting my atoms on these electron domains. And here we go. The way we draw that is we let the capital letter B represent a bonded or terminal atom. And I've got two of them, so each, each of those is going to get a bonded atom on them. Now, now that we have drawn the three-dimensional sketch of the molecule that has the atoms in it, now we look just at the bonded atoms in the central atom and we describe the shape that that takes. We know that this is a 180 degree angle, right? We know that because it's based on the linear electron domain geometry. So because this arrangement of the bonded atoms is in a linear fashion, it is also called a linear molecular geometry. I want to take a moment here to point out something. Anytime you have a bonded atom on every electron domain, the name of the electronic geometry is going to be the same as the name of the molecular geometry. And we'll see that as we go. So here we're going to add, we have three electron domains. We have only two bonded atoms. So I'm going to pick two of these. It doesn't matter which ones at this stage. Two bonded atoms. What does, this, what does that mean this must be up here? Well, this is not a bond then, is it? Because I only have these two bonded atoms. So what must this be? Generally, it must be a lone pair. So I would put a lone pair up there. I could easily put the lone pair down here or here. They're all the same, they're all equivalent at this point. I just want to emphasize here, this line right here 
does not mean I have a single bond to a lone pair. Remember, I can only have bonds to atoms, right? So this line is just representing the direction of that lone pair or in the orbital. Very often you will see these represented in a different way, and that is just to show a balloon, a sort of orbital there, with the lone pair in it without that line pointing its directionality. But for now I'll be using this straight line so you can see when that orbital is in the plane of the board uh, or fading away from you as a dashed line or coming toward you as a wedge. But just to reiterate, this is not a single bond to a lone pair. It's just pointing the direction and the three-dimensionality of the two electrons that are in this orbital. They're unshared electrons. Well, just as we did up here, we are now going to look at the molecular geometry by only considering the bonded atoms. And for this purpose, we ignore any lone pairs, and so we don't even look at the geometry of that lone pair anymore. We're just interested in this arrangement right here. And I think you can see that that arrangement between the bonded atoms and the central atom is a bent molecule up and down. We know the bond angle here is 120 degrees because it's based on the electronic domain geometry of 120 degrees between electron domains. So I can say this is now 120 degrees angle and the molecule overall is bent. Okay, moving on. We're going to go to the next one. We have a trigonal planar electronic geometry, three electron domains. This time we have three bonded atoms on it, so there's a bonded atom on each of these domains. And again, this may be a single bond or a double bond. We don't know what it is yet. We're just right drawing a single straight line to represent any type of electron domain. We know the bond angle here is 120 degrees based on the electronic geometry of trigonal planar. And now when we look at the bonded atoms, all are bonded. All of the electron domains have a bonded atom on them. So the shape of this molecule is the same as the geometry of the electron domains, which is trigonal planar. Okay. Moving on. And now we have a tetrahedral electronic domain geometry. We have only two bonded atoms. At this stage, it does not matter where I put the bonded atoms. I'm going to choose to put them right here, but you could have put them anywhere. I'm putting them here, though, because it will, it will better demonstrate the shape of the geometry. So there are my two bonded atoms. That means that these other electron domains must be lone pairs. We know the angle here between these two bonded atoms is the same or approximately the same as the tetrahedral angle of 109.5. Now in reality, anytime you have a lone pair in your molecule, because lone pairs tend to be fairly large distributions of electron geometry, they have an effect of pushing the other electron domains, the bonded electron domains, closer together. So although I'm saying that this is a 120 degrees, in reality it's slightly less than 120 degrees. The same here. Although 109.5 degrees is the normal angle in a tetrahedral arrangement, because of the lone pairs, they are going to be pushing these two bonded atoms closer together 
And so the angle here of the bonded atoms is a little bit less than 109.5. So I'm going to reflect that here. Just a little bit less than 120 and less than 109.5. Now we have to describe the shape, and again, if we ignore the lone pairs, we just look at the bonded atom shape, we can see that it is, again, a bent molecule. Okay. Moving on, we have a tetrahedral arrangement of four electron domains, three bonded atoms. It doesn't matter which ones I put them on. I'll choose those. That means the remaining one must be a lone pair. The reason I choose those down here is because it will show us a little bit better how we get our geometry. And here again, this angle originally started out 109.5 degrees, but now because of the lone pair, it's a little bit less than 109.5 degrees. Okay. If we look at the shape of this geometry, ignoring the lone pair, we have a little pyramid here. We have the top of the pyramid, by the central atom is the peak of the pyramid, and we have a base of a pyramid, and the base of the pyramid is a triangular base, and so the molecular shape for this is trigonal. Pyramid. It is a little pyramid formed right there with that is the top of the pyramid with the central atom is now the top of the pyramid and a triangular base. All right, we're going to move on now to our next page.